Okay, so we're going to come up with another way that's even better um, than, than solving by completing the square. And it's called the quadratic formula. It's a very famous formula. Um, you can solve quadratic equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where, of course, a can't equal 0. And the reason why a can't equal 0 is because then you would have a linear function. You would have a degree of 1 because the ax squared would go away using the quadratic I'm just gonna use formula. We mainly use it whenever a quadratic equation cannot be factored. Now, factoring, solving by factoring is by far the fastest, easiest way um, to solve a quadratic. But sometimes um, quadratics can't be factored, so we need a different method. Um, so, I want you to watch where this comes from. This is the quadratic formula, and instead of having just letters um, of something to memorize, I want you to um, actually understand where it came from. So just watch what I do. I'm not going to ever ask you to prove where the quadratic formula came from, but I might ask you for you to memorize the quadratic uh, formula. So where does it come from? We're going to be completing the square. So in order to complete the square here, we have to factor out the a. So we factor out um, the a, we get x squared plus, now if I factor out the a to the b, I get b divided by ax, and then I'm going to leave the space, plus c equals 0, of course. So then I take half of the middle term and I square it. So half of b over a, this might be really hard for some of you to comprehend, but if I take b over a, we'll just pretend it's like something like 4. If I take half of 4, you just divide by 2. So if I divide by 2, that is b over 2a. If I square it, I'm actually adding b squared over 4a squared. Okay? So now, again, remembering completing the square, um, I didn't just add b squared over 4a squared. It, I would be adding b squared over 4a squared times a. So now you might say, well, what is that? Well, b squared over 4a squared times a, does everybody see one of the a's will cancel one of the a's? So really I just added b squared over 4a. So I'm going to actually subtract b squared over 4a to compensate. Okay, so now I can't really simplify a bunch of c's and a's, so I'm just going to put plus c minus b squared over 4a equals 0. So I'm not done because i got to actually solve for x. And you're like, oh my gosh, there's lots of letters here. Yeah, there's lots of letters. That's all good. Okay, so we're going to move um, these two things over to the other side. So I'll have a bracket x plus b over 2a, the whole thing squared. I'm going to move these over. So I'm going to get b squared over 4a subtract c. Okay, so because I want to have I'm going to divide by a in a second. I want to have this as one fraction. So this might be a little complicated, but I need to get this c um, as a fraction over 4a. So what would that be if I wanted to have um, the c over a 4a? Well, that would be, I'd have to multiply it by 4a over 4a, which would make 4ac and the whole thing would be over 4a. So in a second, I'm going to divide by a. And when I divide by a, I can cross multiply it down, which means the a now is going to be in the denominator. So I'm going to get b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. So remember that when we um, solve for x, we square root of both sides. We get plus or minus. So x plus 4, sorry, x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus the square root 
have b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now, we haven't talked about this, but if something can actually square root, we can actually um, square root it. And what's the square root of 4a squared? It's 2a. So I'm going to rewrite this. We're almost done. So x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And instead of the denominator being 4a squared, the square root of it, I'm going to write it as 2a. Why? Because in a second, I need to move this over to the other side. So my final thing is going to be minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and the whole thing is over 2a because I'm just combining the two fractions together. So this is the actual quadratic formula. So um, there's lots of different ways that you can memorize the quadratic formula. Uh, one of the, the formulas um, goes to the tune of Jingle Bells. Um, I actually have one that I made with um, some of my students in the past. Just Google it. I'm not going to actually um, play it for you. You can um, play it yourself. Um, like I said, just Google quadratic formula song and you'll find a whole bunch of different things that comes up. So we're going to actually now use the quadratic formula. So example one, what is the coefficient of x in the quadratic um, equation negative x squared plus 8x plus 6 equals 0? So what's the the coefficient of x. Well, that would be 8. I'm just going to move this over so I can write it. Does everybody see it would be 8? Okay, so now we need to identify what the a, b, and c in the quadratic formula is. So the first thing is you need to have it equal to 0 on one side to use the quadratic formula. And then a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant. So in this case, what would be my a, b, and c? Well, a would be 3, b would be 4, and c would be 8. So now it's just a matter of plugging it into the quadratic formula. So let's do example 3a. What's my coefficient of x squared? 1. What's my coefficient of x? 3. What's my co coefficient that doesn't, or sorry, what's my constant? That would be a minus 9. Does everybody see it would be minus 9? Because um, our co Quadratic formula is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So if it's a minus 9, that means the c must have been a minus. So I would highly advise you to write out the quadratic formula each time you do this. So x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x equals minus b, so it's going to be minus 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared would be 3 squared. I'm going to show all my steps here. So 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3, which is minus 9, all over 2 times 1, which would be 2. So what is negative 4 times 1 times minus 9? Well, that's 36. And then we have a 9. So I get minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 and 36 is 45 all over 2. Now, if you need to get the decimal equivalence, you're going to be punching this into your calculator very, very carefully because this actually represents two solutions, negative 3 plus root 45 all over 2 and negative 3 minus root 45 all over 2. So you got to watch because the whole thing is divided by 2. So if you punch it in your calculator and you just go negative 3 plus root 45 divided by 2, you will not get their correct answer. So you got to use brackets. So what do you get? So I want you to punch, practice this. Minus 3 plus the square root of 45 divided by 2. We get 1.8541. And if we do this again, except this time it's a subtraction, we get negative 4.8541. So I want you to um, practice that because a lot of people make a mistake in the final step when they're actually getting the calculator answer. 
So next one. What's my A? 2. What's my B? Negative 6. What's my C? Negative 7. We're going to punch it into the quadratic formula. So x equals minus b, so that would be minus minus 6. So plus 6, plus or minus. Um, I always write the b squared already squared because it's less likely for a mistake. For instance, in this case, it's negative 6, the whole thing squared. And if you write down negative 6 squared, you'll get negative 36 on your calculator, and that's not the correct answer. It's negative 6 times negative 6, which is 36, right? So then it's minus 4 times 2 times minus 7 all over 2a, which in this case is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. So what is 4 times 2? That's 8 times 7 is 56, and 56 plus 36 is 92. So I'm going to get x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 92 all over 4. So again, you get two answers. I'm not going to write out the, how I'm getting the two answers this time. I'm just going to punch it into my calculator. Let's see if you can get the same result. So again, you need to use brackets. 6 plus uh, the square root of 92 divided by 4. I get negative 0 0.8979. Same thing again, but this time with a plus 3.8979. Nine, seven, nine. So make sure you're able to um, figure out how to punch this into your calculator. Okay, let's do the next one. Consider the quadratic equation negative x squared plus two-thirds x minus one-half equals zero. Um, so a quadratic function, quadrat sorry, quadratic equation is hard enough to punch in all this stuff into your calculator, never mind all the fractions. So hopefully somewhere you learned that we can get rid of fractions by multiplying each and every term by the LCD. So what would the LCD of these be? The LCD is 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each one by a, a 6. So negative x squared plus 2 thirds x minus 1 half equals 0. And I'm going to multiply each side by 6. So when I multiply each side by 6, that means 6 is going to get multiplied to all three terms. So I'm going to multiply this by 6, so by 6, by 6, by 6, by 6. So what is negative x squared times 6? Well, that is negative 6x squared. Now, when you multiply 2 thirds times 6, the 3 and the 6 will cross cancel, and I'm left with a 2 times 2, which is 4. And if you don't believe me, punch it into your calculator. 2 thirds times 6, you will get 4x. You should be able to cross cancel. This is the whole point of um, getting rid of the fractions here. Again, what's 1 half times 6? Well, the 2 and the 6 will cross cancel, and then 3 times 1 is uh, 3. So we get minus 3 equals, well, what's 0 times 6? Well, it's 0. Now. I don't know. I don't like having um, a's as my negative. So did you know that you could just um, um, switch all the signs? That's an actual thing you can do. If you don't like the signs, instead of moving this, the left side over to the right side um, to get the signs changed, just switch all the signs. So for instance, negative 6x squared becomes positive 6x squared. Positive 4x becomes minus 4x and minus 3 becomes plus 3. So now I'm going to punch it into my um, quadratic formula. a equals 6, b equals minus 4, c equals 3, so x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 16 uh, minus 4 times a which is 6 times 3 all over 2a which is 12. So 4 times 6 is um, 24, and 24 times 3 is 72. And 16 minus that, you're going to get a negative number. What does that mean? Does everybody see you're going to get... A negative answer there. 
you can't square root a negative answer. So do you remember back when we were looking at um, the first section in this unit? Um, essentially what we're doing here is we're solving the x-intercepts. And if we can't find x-intercepts, what does that mean? In this case, it's no solution, but what is the no solution transfer to be? There is no x-intercepts, meaning the parabola is either um, way above or way below. Does anybody think they know where it would be if it started off as a negative x squared at the beginning? Well, that means it must be way below if it's, if it's opening down, right? So let's move on to the next one. Um, notice that it's not a quadratic. It's in the form of a quadratic. So how would we actually um, do this? Do you remember back um, one of the other things where we make let a equal x squared? What would this become then if a is x squared? This would become 2a squared minus 5a plus 2 equals 0. Now, does this factor? Let's try. So we get a 2a and an a, and a 2, and a 1. And what happens if I make them both minuses? Hey, look at that. 2a times a is 2a squared. 2a times um, minus 2 is minus 4a. Minus 1a it makes minus 5a. And minus 1 times minus 2 makes plus 2. So that means a equals one half and positive two. Remember doing this from the other um, unit in order to get a product of zero. The factors are set equal to zero and we solve. So I move the one over, divide by two, I got one half. I move the two over, I got two. But we're not solving for a, we're solving for x. So that means x equals, x squared equal. All right, so that means x squared equals 1 half and x squared equals 2. Remember how we solve this? Square root both sides, we get x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 half. And if I square root the other one, I get plus or minus the square root of 2. Uh, once we get to the unit on um, radicals, we are going to learn how to what's called rationalize the denominator. So we wouldn't leave the solution as a square root of 1 half. We would actually um, simplify it a little bit more. So last example here, Mark's rectangular garden measures 7 meters by 10. He wants to double the area of his garden by adding equal lengths to both dimensions. Determine the length to the nearest tenth of a meter. Show your work. So let's draw a diagram here. Um, normally it would have been um, a 7 meter by 10 meter, but he wants to add um, equal lengths to both sides. So that means I'm going to add x to both sides. I don't know how much I'm adding, um, but I do know he wants to double the area. Well, what was the area to start with? Well, what's 7 times 10? Well, that means the area was 70 meters squared. He wants to make it 140 meters squared now. So we're going to figure out how we're going to get 140 meters here. So again, we don't know how much we're adding. We're adding the same amount to both sides. And area of a rectangle is length times width. So that means my length is 7 plus x times 10 plus x. And that has to equal my new area, which is 140 square meters. So in order to solve this, I need to actually get this into the um, quadratic form. And the way it's written, I need to FOIL this first. So that would be 70 plus, if I do an outside, I get a 7x, and an inside, I get a 10x. So that means 17x. Last, I get plus x squared equals 140. Again, in order to solve a quadratic, we needed to have it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So that would be x squared plus 17x. If I move the 140, I would subtract the 140 to the 70, which means I get minus 70 um, equals 0. So does this factor? At first glance, you might think it does, but it actually doesn't. 
because you think it's 7 times 10, and 7 plus 10 is 17, but there's no way that you could get a negative product here. So try it just for your own sake, but there's no way you can actually get this to factor. So, and the next lesson, actually, I'll show you how you know um, that you can factor or not um, later. If you've tried and you think it should be factorable, there is an actual um, thing, a formula to figure out whether you can or not, but that's tomorrow's lesson. So, A equals 1, B equals 17, and C equals minus 70. So, X equals minus B, minus 17, plus or minus 17 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 70 all over 2a, which would be 2. So I'm going to simplify inside the radical. So that would be 17 squared plus 280. So I get x equals minus 17 plus or minus the square root of 569 all over 2. So we need to actually, it says to round to the nearest tenth of a meter. So I'm going to do the first one, which is bracket minus 17 plus the square root of 569 divided by 2. And I get roughly 3.4. It says to the nearest tenth of a meter. If I do the other one, it's the subtraction one. So I'll go back and retype it in with subtraction, I get negative 20.4 meters. Well, can you ever have negative 20.4 meters? No. So we will reject that solution. Um, you need to show that you actually got that, but you need to reject it in the end. So what is the length, this length that I need to add? You could say, therefore, uh, Mark needs to add approximately, because remember we rounded, 3.4 meters to each dimension.